I noticed on the Digiland website that uh, a new analog discovery has been introduced. It apparently has been out about two or three months called the Analog Discovery 2 and the uh, price has gone up a little bit. Uh, I think the old one used to sell for around 200 or 250 dollars was the list price. I can't be sure of that because it's been a while since I bought mine. I got mine on a special sale for $149, but that was uh, more than a year ago, so prices have probably changed a lot in the meantime. At any rate, I was wondering, because on the uh, spec sheet for this, which is down here, a couple of things that they noticed was it says two-channel USB oscilloscope with a 14-bit 100 mega sample per second. Then it says it has a 30 megahertz plus bandwidth with the analog discovery BNC adapter board. Well I have the adapter board for my original analog discovery. I'll call it, for clarification, I'll call it the analog discovery 1. So with the 1 I decided maybe it would be a good idea to see just how reliable the uh, uh, old analog discovery was at higher frequencies. So I set up a little test. What I've got here is the analog discovery with a 50 ohm termination on channel 1 and a 50 ohm terminator on channel 2, 50 ohm BNC cable going up to my generator, which right now I have set to 25 megahertz. <clears throat> now I started out at 1 kilohertz and measured the peak to peak. I have uh, the, the generator thinks it's putting out 1 volt into 50 ohms. So uh, I measured that and actually by the time it gets to the analog discovery, the analog discovery thinks that it's actually about 990 uh, millivolts. So in other words, it lost about 10 millivolts in the cabling and, and in the uh, BNC adapter and so on. Uh, but I used that as my baseline. Then I ran the generator up to 25 megahertz, first in 1 kilohertz, then 10 kilohertz, then 100 kilohertz and finally 1 megahertz steps all the way up to 25 megahertz. What I discovered is that in general the analog discovery 1 also will work up to 25 megahertz. Now this particular generator only goes to 25 and for reasons that I'll talk about in a second I decided to stop there. Let me reset the uh, camera over here so that you can see this a little better and by the way the reason that I'm using channel 2 instead of channel 1 is simply because channel 2 displays in blue and one of the problems that I'm also trying to work on is how to get a better display of the analog discovery. I've tried uh, a laptop display. I've tried a conventional uh, display on a tower PC. I've tried a PC input to an HDMI television. And the reality is I do not get very good video off of the analog discovery. In other words, the picture that I see when I'm using the analog discovery is very good. But when I try to put it onto video, it doesn't seem to work very well. So let me try to readjust a little bit and see if I can show you what I've, what I've got here. Okay, here is the 25 megahertz signal. And you may notice that I set the trigger up in this region. One of the things I discovered is when you get near 20 megahertz, the trigger on the analog discovery one gets a little bit unstable. Now what is interesting though is that the display continues to operate fairly reliably. You see it's bouncing around a little bit and if you notice up here I have a measurement turned on which shows that we're getting between 5 and 600 uh, sometimes as high as 670 millivolts 
By my calculation, the 3dB point would be 690. So what I'm going to do is see if I can lower the frequency of the generator. That's 23 megahertz, and you see it's clearly above 700. 24 megahertz, and it's right at 700. And it's only when you go to 25 megahertz that the readings start dropping below uh, the 3 dB point. Now let's look at what happens on the screen when we do the same thing. And I hope you can you can see uh, see that it's it's very difficult to see that on the camera. But I'm now going to drop down to 23 megahertz, 20 megahertz. 15 megahertz. This was the most stable waveform that I could get at 15 megahertz. You may notice I've moved the trigger level down to near zero. Once again, it's still 500 millivolts peak or one volt peak to peak. And now I'm going to go up again. That's 20 megahertz. And you notice there it's starting to get uh, a little bit squirrely. And so I'm going to see if moving the trigger level helps that at all. Yes, it looks like there are some sweet spots. There is one where the, the trace gets fairly stable. The Analog Discovery 1 works up to around 20 megahertz pretty reliably, and it'll even display a 25 megahertz signal. It's a little more than 3 dB down, but not very much more. So, in other words, what I've discovered is that adding the BNC board to the analog discovery, which gets rid of the, uh, the flywire connections, and terminating the unused channel in 50 ohms, gets you a scope with what I would say is about a 20 megahertz reliable, uh, 25 megahertz uh, usable frequency range. So what I want to try now is I want to see if using 10x probes helps the situation at all. So let me set up to do that and I'll be right back. This is a 1 volt peak-to-peak uh, -peak square wave at 1 megahertz. I did this to make sure that the compensation on the probe was was adjusted correctly. I'm now using a 10x probe you what the uh, setup looks like over here. And what I've done is I've terminated the generator in a 4.7k resistor. It just happened to be one that was laying here on the bench. And I've set the impedance output of the generator to high impedance now. That also requires me to reset the level since it, with a 50 ohm output impedance the uh, generator is driving a lot harder than when you set it to high impedance. So uh, you have to readjust the output level to make sure you're still using a volt. So now I'm going to go to a sine wave. And we'll come back over. And look at the signal. And you see it's a pretty good reproduction of a 1 megahertz sine wave. Back out just a little bit so you can see most of the screen. And now I'm going to raise the frequency. 5 megahertz. 9 megahertz, 10 megahertz. Now you see it's starting to get jittery. That's at 20 megahertz. So what I'll do is I'll go back to 15 megahertz. It seems pretty stable there. I'll change the time base to 50 nanoseconds. And then we'll go up to 16. By the way, you may notice I've changed the vertical scale so that this is now 50 millivolts, which is with a by 10 probe really 500 millivolts of signal. So peak to peak, a volt would be from this line to this line. You see we're a little under that. So let's go on up. 17, 18, 19, 20. Let's see if we can adjust the uh, trigger. Get a little more stable signal. Maybe right there. And the time base will go to 20 nanoseconds per division. And you see, while you wouldn't really want to work with this at this frequency, it's a little bit unstable, it's still usable 
to 20 megahertz. My appreciation of what's going on is that if you use 50 ohm uh, terminations in your generator and in the uh, input to the analog discovery, you can get near 25, about 23 or so megahertz. <clears throat> if you use a scope probe, you're uh, only going to get near 20 megahertz, but nonetheless, you're going to get frequency response far beyond what the spec sheet of the analog discovery says is true. The original spec sheet says that it has a 500 microvolt to 5 volts per division, 1 meg ohm, 24 picofarad inputs, with 5 megahertz analog bandwidth. Well, it's very clear to me that you can go well above 10 megahertz if you add the BNC adapter board that's shown there. This BNC adapter board plugs in to the analog discovery and then it gives you two channels for oscilloscope probes or BNC cables and two channels on the other side for the arbitrary waveform generator. Now I haven't tested the arbitrary waveform generator so I'm going to play around a little bit and see if I can get a little higher output from that arbitrary waveform generator. Well I'm glad I started experimenting with this because I discovered that I had been misusing the arbitrary waveform generator. Well not misusing it in an abusive sense but misusing it in that I didn't understand that I had the frequency limits set to only 2 megahertz, and that's why I could only go to 2 megahertz. But if you set the max frequency, I'll show you how you do that. You open this, and then you go up here to the top, and it allows you to set up to 10 megahertz. So, we'll set the max frequency to 10 megahertz, and now I've connected the output of the arbitrary waveform generator, that's the cable that you see here, to the input through this 4.7K resistor. In other words, all I did is I unplugged the cable that was connected to the Rigol generator and plugged it into the arbitrary waveform generator. So now let's go up to 10 megahertz on the AWG and see what happens with the oscilloscope. At the top is the oscilloscope from the analog discovery one and now I'm going to raise the frequency. It's right now set at 500 kilohertz. And the peak-to-peak -peak voltage shown is 104 or 5 millivolts. That's 10 megahertz on the frequency. Now let's change the time per division to about 50 nanoseconds, which is what we had earlier. And you see we get a pretty stable 10 megahertz. So I should have checked this out. I've had the analog discovery for a year, I guess, or, or more. And I never have set it to more than 2 megahertz because I had misset the maximum frequency. Now, I knew about the max min boxes and all of that, but for some reason I just never questioned the fact that I was only getting 2 megahertz out of what the spec sheet said I should be able to get a 10 megahertz signal from. So what I've determined is that you can get very stable 10 megahertz response out of the analog discovery one. So anyway, I don't know how useful or interesting this information will be to those of you that are thinking of buying an analog discovery two. I may still buy one just because it has some additional features, including one that I really like, the adjustable power supply and the ability to add an external power supply. You may have noticed in some of my earlier videos that I avoided using the power supply in the analog discovery because it was, uh, in my opinion, flaky. 
largely because you just can't power things off of a USB connector. It's not, uh, it's not the fault of the analog discovery. You just can't get much power out of a USB connector. But now that you can add a power supply to the analog discovery 2, you can get up to, I think it's 750 milliamps, and the power supply is now adjustable. It doesn't have to be 5 volts. So if you're working, for example, with 3.3 volt logic, you can now set your power supplies to that. Earlier, the only way you could do that is to set a uh, DC level on one of the arbitrary waveform generators, which was adjustable. But that there you lose a uh, an analog, a uh, arbitrary waveform channel, and it's not a very uh, good way to power your circuit anyway. So, long story, could have been a lot shorter, especially if I'd have understood how to use the analog discovery and the arbitrary waveform generator maximum frequency, uh, but nonetheless, I think what, what I've discovered is that the original analog discovery one actually is much more capable than I thought it was especially if you add the BNC connector box that you see there. By adding that, you get extended frequency response and the ability to use oscilloscope probes, BNC cables, and other such things. So it looks like that that add some features to the original analog discovery that are useful and if I get an analog discovery too I'll let you know how that works as well. Once again I hope you got something out of this and if so that uh, we'll be able to do something together in the future. Thanks for watching.